Hey guys, so these are the parts we are going to replace for our Cummins ISX. We have a crankcase filter or a crankcase pressure fault code. Okay, so what we're going to do is replace the crankcase pressure sensor. The customer told me that he has an oil pressure issue where the pressure dropped out of nowhere, so more than likely we have a bad sensor. And then last but not least, the crankcase filter itself. Okay, now this one is actually a maintenance free one that they have. For Cummins. Now, not all the ISX have this one. Let me show you what it is. It's a little bit more expensive. I think about maybe 20, 25 bucks more, but I'm going to show it to you. Check that shit out. Easy, simple replacement crankcase filter. Okay, it's maintenance free. Okay, as you can, hopefully you can see that there. Maintenance free, replace only if damaged. So check that out. That's pretty much it. It's more like a skeleton, lets everything breathe nicely. It's got a nice little I guess filter down there. And we're gonna be installing that into our truck again, along with the new sensor and our oil. Here's a side view of where your crankcase filter goes, located on the driver's side. Here's your crankcase pressure sensor. Okay, right now we removed it. As you can see, this is all the oil and everything that gets built up in there. And that typically what is what causes the fault code to activate. And again, this is a Cummins ISX. Let me see if it tells me here, it's a 435 ST. So again, this is like on 2008, 2009. So I wanted to show you that. I'll show you the fault code in a second. And again, it's a simple R&R. &R. There's nothing to do, nothing to reset. Um, you might want to clear your fault code, but other than that, there's nothing to reset, nothing to calibrate. It's a simple R&R. &R. And we're gonna, we're gonna do the oil pressure sensor, which there's a couple of other videos online. You could probably do that yourself if you wanted to, but we're gonna do it here just on ours to cover it. And again, that sensor is located right back there. You can't see it, it's on the engine block. So that's gonna be some fun. Get into that. Okay, guys, so here is our crankcase filter housing. All you really want to do is kind of just clean it up before you install the new one. Get some of that excess oil out of the way. Okay, it doesn't have to be super clean. But clean it up as best you can. Okay, just kind of clean it up a little bit before you put the new one in there. Okay, again, your filter gets installed right in there. Literally, it's R&R. &R. This is about as easy as it gets. I mean, you literally line it up, put your cover on. Okay, you're going to have two, four, six, eight bolts. Okay over here on the side where your sensor goes, okay? This is all you're gonna need. It's gonna be a little Allen. This is the bolt that holds it down. This is your Allen, and if I'm not mistaken, it's going to be the number four. Shit, can't even see it. That's it, number four. So let's get this thing put on there, put everything back on, clear the fault code, and we should be good to and go. And there you have it. Now, I didn't really show the process of putting this back together, but this is just gonna be your bolts. And again, it's a 5 16th, if I'm not mistaken. You're gonna repl uh, replace your sensor. There we go. There's your sensor, your plug. Literally, it's a plug and play. There's nothing to it. This hose, if you take it out, this is your CAC hose. Take it out from the clamp, move it out of the way, move it down, move it up, doesn't matter. Get to your filter, put your new one back in, put everything back literally the way you found it. This is like torque down to like something inch pounds, which is almost nothing. And again, that is the little bolt that holds down your crankcase sensor and you're done. There's nothing to it. It should clear the code itself. If not, again, you can use your Insight software to remove that. That's pretty much it. So now we're going to get started on the oil pressure sensor, which again is down there somewhere nice and tucked away. So anyway, I'm going to get started on that. And again, that's just this particular video that I want to show you was the crankcase and we'll get to the oil pressure sensor right now. Okay, in a sec. let's take a look at our fault codes that we have here. Right now there are no active fault codes. Everything is inactive. So the one code that I wanted to show you guys, the whole point of this video was the crankcase pressure, crankcase pressure, crankcase pressure. As you can see on there, okay? Fault code 0556, 0555 and 1942. So in the video, I showed you guys how to set, how to essentially take care of that problem. And that's usually gonna be the sensor and the filter itself. That's really all we're gonna be doing on this video, but I wanted to show you those fault codes and what we're gonna do here as far as clearing the code. It's generally a good, good practice, okay? And the reason you want to do that, okay, is again, so if any codes come back in the future, you are aware of them, how to do it. So it's actually very easy to clear. It tells you to turn off the code or turn off the key. God, that fucking low buzzer here is annoying on the international. I don't know if you guys agree with me on that. But anyway, so we're gonna clear the code. It doesn't take very long, it's not very difficult. Okay, it should literally clear everything out of the memory. 
And once it does that, it will automatically tell you to turn the key on. It will show you that it, it will verify that the codes are then clear and you are all set to let the truck go down the road. So that's pretty much it. It's a very simple fault code. Uh, it's actually very common on this particular ISX. So if you guys have any questions, as always hit me up, let me know in the comment section. Okay, so we cleared the code and as you can see there, there you go, no fault codes detected in the ECM. It's literally that simple when you clear the codes. Again, I recommend it, especially if it's a truck you're familiar with. Uh, if it's a truck that maybe comes around every once in a while, leave the code there because it makes it a lot easier to find out what the code is in the future or any other issues you may have. Okay, I don't know if that makes any sense. Some guys like to clear it all the time and then you're kind of wondering, is it a new code, is it an old code? So in this case, I know the truck, the truck's one of my regular customers. We're gonna clear the code as we did there. And that's pretty much it.